the gentleman had four cats as well that kind of harassed Benny. So he had a very difficult time in his early years of life, and as a result, he started doing something a lot of parrots do as a nervous habit, and that's called overpreening or feather plucking. It's sort of like a person chewing their nails. Parrots will sometimes overpreen their feathers. Most birds spend most of their day cleaning those feathers off because they're very important. But if you look, his tail's a little ruffled along the sides here, and he's kind of got a bare thigh. Sorry, not right now, Benny. <laughs> uh, he's got a bare thigh there. So that's something that we spend a lot of time trying to overcome. A huge help is doing programs like this. Pretty soon we're going to start setting up some perches around the museum for the birds to hang out for a few hours a day as well. So the socialization, enrichment, to keep that mind going is a very important thing to keep these birds happy and healthy. And remember, they live for about 80 years. They're also about as smart as a two-year-old child is figuring out abstract thoughts and concepts, colors, shapes, numbers. They're also probably louder, probably more rambunctious, and certainly a lot more destructive. So if you want to go out and get a parrot as a pet, unbelievable animals, not such great pets unless you're really dedicated. You're essentially getting a two-year-old for the next 80 years of your life. So something to really think about. But do you guys have any questions at all? Anything you'd like to know? about Benny here before Kate goes back. <laughs> does, he, does he know what sounds he's making? Like, would he make a sound of a hawk because he was going to scare some predator away? That's a great question. Um, so, does he purposely make like a red-tailed hawk sound to scare off another predator? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, they're certainly intelligent enough to associate those things. So if they made a certain sound that scared off a certain predator in the wild, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they repeated doing that. They learned that that sound would work. I don't think they uh, necessarily consciously planned that out. <laughs> Almost back in. That's what a red-tailed hawk sounds like. They also be these animals, so I'm going to do that. Uh, I think a lot of the sounds they make are mostly for attention and communication. Absolutely. And he, he knows uh, individuals even by the voices. So if someone he wants to play with walks by and they he doesn't see them, but hears their voice, he'll start yelling and carrying on because he wants them to come over and play with him. So he absolutely recognizes individuals by both face.